Masinga Dam, located in a little-known town center called Masinga, is an embankment dam on the Tana River, the longest river in Kenya. It straddles the borders of Embu and Machakos counties in Eastern Province and is located in the northeast of Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Construction of the dam began in 1978 during the late President Jomo Kenyatta's rule. Four years later, the dam was completed. The dam is managed by the Tana and Athi River Development Authority, popularly known as TARDA, a government agency. Since 1981, the dam has been used for power production and is part of the Seven Fox Scheme. Masinga Dam is a 60 meter tall and 2,200 meter long dam. The volume of the dam is 4,950,000 cubic meters and has a spillway and a bottom outlet. We, ha we, have, the, we have these towers, water towers, that feed into the Tana River system. That's the Abadias, the Mount Kenya, and Nyabene. These are the main uh, water towers uh, that uh, form the source of the Tana River system. At full reservoir level, the flood level capacity is 1,056 meters above sea level. The reservoir of the dam has a surface area of 120 square kilometers, which is equivalent to 45 kilometers, and its total capacity is close to 1.6 million cubic meters. Up until two weeks ago, little was known about this dam that has existed for close to 40 years. The marvel that is Masinga Dam would have stayed hidden had it not been for the prevailing unusually heavy rainfall and the attendant floods that threatened to affect the dam. Two weeks ago, Kenjan gave an alert. We only upscale it to our level uh, today uh, so that people really have to take it serious because wherever Kenjan gives, uh, there have been accusations that uh, Kenjan opens water which is not true because we are using that water they, in the dams, dams, yes, the specific dams, Masinga and the others. The affected areas will be along Kariza, Karsen, all the way to Lamo. Mount Kenya is close to, 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 to Tana River, very close, and at, at that level. Nyabene is very close. So the steepness from the Mount Kenya and water coming down without anything which is holding that water, Imagine the water is coming very fast down there. When it comes now to the river, then it goes down to an inclination of six, 60, 600 meters. So this is the, our first water which is coming down from the, the, the eight huge rivers. Because of its large volume, the reservoir is crucial in regulating the flow of water for the other four hydroelectric power plants or dams downstream. The other dams are Gitaru, Kamburu, Kindaruma, and Kiambere. Just like Masinga, the other dams also get a fair share of the Tana River water for power generation, and this has been the norm where the rainfall recorded in the Mount Kenya and Abadea and Nyambene regions is heavy or depreciated. But with the warning from the Energy Cabinet Secretary Charles Keter two weeks ago that Masinga Dam was nearing spillage levels, all eyes were trained on this dam, the biggest in eastern Central Africa. Eyes were also locked on the lower parts of Tana River, where it was also said the effects of the spillage would be felt hard. The affected people, especially on Kariza, and down to Lamo. Uh, the people who will be affected on how many uh, or how much is the damage. Uh, my colleague in charge of uh, devolution working in jointly with the county governments of uh, Carissa, Tana River, uh, they are working on that so that they can be evaluate how many people can be affected. The Minister, the Minister of Water also, we are working collectively so that they are the ones who are in charge of the, the, the lower stream. Wednesday, May 16th, the media and engineers began monitoring the dam closely. The water levels had risen from 1,037 meters above sea level to 1,055 meters in less than a month, and the rise was not showing signs of stopping. Currently, we are at a level of 1056.37 uh, meters above sea level, and uh, looking at the levels now, it shows that uh, we are likely to start spilling at uh, this evening. Maybe any time from uh, 6 p.m., we are about to start uh, spilling. 
Every dam the world over has been designed to hold water for certain specific purposes, but all designs must have a spillway to cater for excess water. The spillway is usually constructed on the lower side of the dam, and once full, the water naturally drains itself out of the dam, meaning any inflowing water must get out in equal measure through the spillway. The Masinga Dam spillway was constructed the same time the dam was being constructed, so it is not an afterthought, as many would like to imagine. Look at the dams that is constructed this way, so that if it were done uh, upright that way, you can collapse it. But then it is done that way. So that when the water comes, it just fills up. But then you control to a certain level that you give it up, then it spills. That way, so that you don't overflow. On Tuesday last week, this spillway was completely dry. There was no water activity here. We marveled at just how elaborate the construction was done 37 years ago. The last time there was water activity on the spillway was in 2014. But this was about to change in a very short period of time. Hours, in fact. I am standing next to the spillway here in Masinga Dam. Now, the spillway here in Masinga Dam is supposed to take care of one thing and one thing alone, the overflow of water that has been as a result of rainflow from areas like Mount Kenya and the Abadares. About two months ago, the recordings here, the water levels, was at 10.38. Today, the recordings are at 10.56. 24 hours later, on Wednesday 16th, the dam recorded its highest level of water at 1,056 meters above sea level, the highest it had recorded in four years. Slowly, the winds pounded the water, creating waves, while the inflow kept pushing the water towards the lower side of the dam. It was only a matter of time before the spillage began. In fact, if the rains uh, continue the way it's raining in the Mount Kenya and Abaria region, we are about to spill for a couple of months. Just before midnight, the dam started spilling thousands of litres of water, two days earlier than the warning had stated. We are expecting in our estimation by Friday the dam should be full and the spiller should be taking effect from Friday. So if you see the root cause of water going down to Carissa, it should take about four days. So from Friday, maybe if we add another four days, um, it comes to about 21st, 22nd there. We should expect it now uh, to go down to Carissa and then of course another four days down Lamu. Anxiety both at the dam, its environs and across the country grew. 9th May 2018, the area is Solai, Nakuru County, and news of a disaster hit the country like a shockwave. A private dam known as Patel Dam had experienced breakage in its wall, letting about 200 million litres of water downstream. In just a few minutes, Energy Village had been flattened. And that's very short uh, time, there was an intensity of the rain was very high. So it's been happening last two days and then, uh, you know, when the boulders and the roots carry in the water, they get hit by the wall and the wall got cracked. And of course, when the wall get cracked, the, the dam, uh, the spillage started. Human beings were overwhelmed by the sheer power of the water and, like inanimate objects, were swept away to their muddy deaths. Property worth thousands of shillings destroyed. In the end, 47 people died many of them children. Questions about the dam's existence and method used to construct it have been raised, and while the answers are not yet forthcoming, attention had now shifted to the much larger Masinga Dam. So I, I tend to think it did not have a spillway. If it had a spillway, said, the devastation would have no, not been there, because even the owner would have seen that yes, it is a spilling. It, there is excess. But if it is I called it a kalai, I called it a pan. If it's a kalai, and then the water is there, and the motor is coming, and you are not, you are not, it is not spilling, in its, you have not given it a self-regulatory spilling a mechanism, then it will burst. For the past 10 days, the spillage has gained momentum at Masinga. The volumes of water have kept increasing, and the velocity at which the water runs through the spillway is now greater than it was the previous day. 
The spillway here at Masinga Dam is now working full force. This is after the water levels here at Masinga Dam rose to the highest levels ever recorded this year. This means this dam can no longer hold any inflow of water from Mount Kenya or Abadeas or any other sources that feed this dam. At the tail end of the spillway, there is a spectacular view, an artificial waterfall of sorts. When it first started spilling, the water from the dam looked like this. There are nine concrete pillars built at the end of the spillway. The work of the short fork-like pillars is to break up the speed of the water and also to ensure that the water from the spillway does not drop down immediately and with a huge force that would create soil erosion and destroy the nearby environment. We have reached now the maximum level at 1056.5 meters above the sea level. Where you can no longer hold the water here. Is, yeah. the inflow. Yes, the, so that after that, the any additional water will go out, but not through, through the dam wall, but the side spillway. There is one open spillway. That is the confectional dam's construction method. That when the dam is full, the excess water will be will be taken out. Sent, not to spoil the, the, the not the bursting, what you are calling bursting, but taken over through the open spillway. Within days, the waterfall increased and has become an attraction for the locals. From evening to morning, the spillage has not subsided. This is because the rainfall being recorded in Mount Kenya, the Abadeas and Nyambene hasn't subsided either. When we release uh, this water down once, it goes to Kaburu Dam. And uh, Kaburu Dam, you know, it's also fed by the river. And now that water can be used downwards into the casket by the power plants which are downwards of uh, Masika Dam. But aside from collecting and spilling excess water, Masinga Dam's main function is electricity generation. Known as the run of the river hydroelectric power plant, the dam is operated by the Kenya Electricity Generating Company, Kenjan. The plant has a nameplate capacity of 40 megawatts. Its average annual generation is between 128 and 232 gigawatts. The power plant contains two Kaplan turbine generators with 20 megawatts each. Once water has been used to produce electricity, the dam releases the water onwards for spillage using underground tunnels. Contrary to reports that the excess spillage on the top of the dam is being caused intentionally. Masinga Dam is one of the five dams christened the Seven Fox Dams. The name comes from the way the rivers along the dams interact. The water is taken away through a spillway, an open spillway, and the water goes back to the, to, to the water, to the, to the river. When it goes to the river, then it goes to the next dam. It generates. If it spews, it water is released to the next dam, and then to the next dam until you reach Kabere. Between Masinga and Kabere, these two small dams, these really these small dams, set, they still open the, the, the waters. And so that the, water, the excess water that it go, it can flow down. Masinga, as a regulatory, maybe I would have tried to tell you, the purpose of Masinga and Kabere, as much purpose as it was. One of them is to control the flooding, like the flooding that has come. That's a fresh flood that has come. Excess water that comes through rain, rain run of rain. See it? That water is, is held by the dam. After Masinga Dam comes the Gitaru Dam, which is partly fed by the spillage from Masinga and other rivers. The other two dams that come after Gitaru are Kamburu and Kindaruma. They are all spilling millions and millions of liters of water at the moment, a phenomenon that will continue for the next one month according to experts. At the tail end of the cascade is the Kiambere Dam, the last one in the so-called Seven Fox Scheme. The dam has a distance of 27 kilometers. It is the second biggest after Gitaru in terms of electricity generation, as it contributes over 168 megawatts to the country's national grid. When we see the water going this way, we are not comfortable because these are west. Already it's a west. It should go through the the tub, the tub and generate power. For the nation and 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 uh, uh, limit the, 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 that 
danger it is causing down. So we would not wish to see uh, this kind of overflow. But this dam has also reached its full capacity. It stands at 700 meters above sea level and by last week, spillage had already started. Yet out of the five dams along the cascade, Kiambere Dam has the most magnificent water spillage of them all. The water has been running non-stop on the spillway for several days now and the spillage continues to be breathtaking, especially from a bird's eye view. The water that comes to Kiambere is mostly comes from the upper reservoirs because uh, currently there are no rains in Okamban, neither in Embu. But you can find the dam now it is spilling. So the water we are receiving is from upstream, that is from Mount Kenya region, from Masinga Dam. Once the Masinga is full, it, it is spilled. The, the, spilling, the, spill, the water that spilled it goes to Kamburu, from Kamburu to Kitatu, from Kitatu to Kendaruma, then to Kiambere. So this is what we are seeing is the excess of after generation. What the dam cannot hold is what is spilling now. From here, the, this excess water goes straight to the uh, Indian Ocean. It is causing that, that, that problem in Tana River flooding. But if we could have an extra dam downstream, there would be no flooding because one, there are, there are several rivers downstream that, have not be, that we have not collected the water so that it, we regulate it before it causes some uh, damages down at Tana River or in Garissa. The water that is bursting out of the spillway here in Kiambere Dam is such a magnificent view for anyone who comes here for the very first time. This, of course, is excess water that can no longer be held here at the Kiambere Dam. It is now falling directly into the Tana River. Once it hits the Tana River, the water is off, flowing downstream to other areas until it ends up in the lower parts of the country, including Darissa and Tana Delta, the areas where flooding has been causing destruction. Kiambere Dam also has underground tunnels built by a construction company from Yugoslavia. Some of the tunnels drilled 30 years ago are close to 3 kilometers away from the dam. Their main purpose is to allow passage of water to the power station where the turbines are located. They drill down about 20 meters, 30 meters, drilling to know that that rock is sufficient to hold the water of this volume. It's not something that it is done without, 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 it is done by people who are experts, not only in the country, but even outside. These things were, de were, were designed the, uh, with, a, with a view of international conventional standards. While the water continues to spill, fear is a common emotion among a large number of residents of Tana River County. Change experts are calling the terrible new normal. When the announcement was made by two cabinet secretaries warning people about the spillage and the consequences of it, it resonated with a number of people in Tana River County, filling them with fear about their future, which was now being threatened by the forces of nature. Was this the beginning of the end of their lives? Would the flooding be catastrophic? While the answers were hard to come by, many chose to pack and leave. But others decided to stay put. They simply had nowhere else to go. Even before the spillage from the five dams began, flooding had already started to cause havoc here. Houses were submerged, food crops destroyed, and lives were lost. And the news that more water was heading this way from the Seven Fox Dams was no light matter. It has been reported that close to 70% of Tana River County has been destroyed by floods and only a third of the land is accessible by road. A visit to the expansive county, which is the size of the former central Nyanza and western provinces combined, reveals what is slowly shaping into Kenya's biggest humanitarian crisis. The majority of the county's 240,000 population is seeking help in 16 IDP camps run by the Red Cross. At least 10 people have been killed by the floods, but engineers at the Seven Fox Dams insist the flooding has nothing to do with the spillage of excess water from the five dams, at least not now. Before Kabere 
started spilling. Before it started spilling, said one week before, there was flooding at the Garissa and also at the Tana Delta. So when people I could hear people saying that Kenijen has to pay compensation at that level, it was not correct. Because the water has not spilled, the upstream dam, they have not spilled, but there is flooding. Why? Because below, below, below Kabele, we have got seven, eight huge rivers, huge rivers that are coming from the, 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 the eastern side of Mount Kenya and all the entire Nyabene hills. The argument that the spillage from Masinga, Gitaru, Kamburu, Kindaruma and Kiambere dams is a cause of excess flooding in Tana Delta is not about to end soon. Those on the upper side of the Tana River are insistent it is only a myth, while those at the lower end of the river are convinced that they are on the receiving end of spillage that should be controlled. Indeed, there have been plans to control this flooding following the many deaths recorded year in, year out. First, there are suggestions to control the inflow of water right from Masinga Dam. Immediately after the rains, again, uh, when we go to a long spell of drought, we should, ex we should not experience that. We should be using the utilization of the water. We and the ministry also are working on a pump storage facility and then pumping water from Kambere up so that uh, wherever the low levels of water we can be filling Masinga and then generation like that and then of course allowing what environmental environmentally is uh, required. There are also plans to raise the walls at Masinga Dam as well as the walls of the spillway in order to control the spillage at an early stage. The 1.5 meter wall will cost 15 million dollars to construct. But the most ambitious plan is to build the biggest dam after Kiambere so that all the water spilling down to Tana Delta will be collected and stored. It will be known as the Grand Falls Dam. When you get the other downstream huge dam that you can control those waters set from the eight rivers and also the one which is coming through, Mas through Kiambere, Masiga through Kiambere, then it will be, it will, that, that managed uh, flooding is the one that we, that we are under the design of, of Agra de Force. It is designed in such a manner that the flooding, the people of Dana Delta, they require flooding because they rely on flood, of, 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 of flooding, but control the flooding. So the Agra de Force is designed in such a manner that you will be releasing two floods per year, controlled that you cannot destroy the life, the, the, the life and, and the livelihood of the people down the stream. Tarda has completed feasibility studies and the location of the gigantic dam is already agreed on. But the gigantic facility, which is expected to be four times the size of Masinga Dam, is already causing friction between officials of Tarda and Kenjan. The original design when we wanted to do a grade force at the BOT was through a pumping system. The pumping system, that's what we wanted. But then you found that when it, the feasibility that was done, we did not do it. So the people who wanted to do it in the ministry, they forgot the files here. They did not take the files so that they can see the original concept of Hagar de Force. The original concept of Hagar de Force is to generate energy through a repumping system. Because when you do a repumping system, the overflow, the, 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 the spilling water that is going, you are taking it back. As for the fear raised by many concerning the walls of each of the five dams, well, rest assured, the walls of farm have never shown signs of wear and tear. And since 1981, when the dams started operating, there have never been cracks or leakage sighted on the walls. Meanwhile, the spilling continues, sending the mighty waters downstream to a people still fearful for their safety. Nimrotabu, NTV.